So how do you connect automated release notes for Jira with your Confluence? That is one of the most common questions that we hear from our end users. Now, many of the teams would want to publish their release notes content directly from Jira into their Confluence, right? So that is where the integration between automated release notes and Confluence comes in very handy. I've navigated to the automated release notes settings screen integrations tab. One can land on this page as a Jira admin, you have to click on the top settings icon in the top right corner, then navigate to apps. And then from the left-hand navigation, you'll notice automated release notes configurations. Now it's good to know that ARN allows connections up to three Confluence instances, right? So you can publish release notes from your ARN to three different Confluence instances. In majority of the cases, one Confluence instance is more than sufficient, but if required, you can publish the release notes content to multiple instances as well. Now let us first look at what you need in order to integrate with Confluence. Let me click on add Confluence instance and it will show up the title, Confluence URL, username and API token, right? Now there is one major difference between the cloud version of Confluence and server version of Confluence, right? The cloud version of Confluence needs API token, whereas the server version of Confluence needs password of the user, right? So these that is one of the most important differences. So you have to be mindful of the fact that whether you are trying to integrate with an on-prem confluence or a cloud confluence, accordingly, the inputs would change a little bit. Now, first of all, the title itself can be anything. It is utilized when you are configuring the confluence action within ARN's rules, right? As far as the Confluence URL is concerned, it could be anything for the server or data center variants. But when it comes to the cloud instances, the cloud Confluence, you have to provide the entire URL up to Wiki. Whether you include the slash at the end of the Wiki or not, that's fine, but you need to have the entire URL up to Wiki. Then in case of cloud, the usernames are always email addresses. Whereas in case of server or data center, these usernames could be identifiers such as A1050 or you know, the employee IDs that typically um, enterprise employees have. Uh, they could be simple usernames such as Anand itself, or they could even be email addresses, but in case of cloud, they always are email addresses. Keep that in mind. And then finally, like I mentioned earlier, you have to get an API token when you are utilizing Confluence cloud, right? How, how to get that API token? You can just click on this link and follow the steps mentioned. It's fairly straightforward. You just have to make sure that you are connecting with the right user, right? Now, one common problem that we hear is, uh, or rather one common confusion that we come across is users tend to provide their own email address as the username and they end up getting API token for a different user or vice versa. They provide username for user, say, release notes at amiboids.com, but they try and generate the API token for their logged in user. So you have to be sure that you are generating API token for the same user whose username you are providing. Secondly, whether it's cloud or server, you have to make sure that the user that you are configuring for this integration has read and write access. Read is not really uh, different access, but the uh, write permission on the Confluence instance. 
if you are doing it for a specific space then at least for that specific space this user must have the right permission only then you will be able to create release notes in confluence via automated release notes hope that was helpful thank you very much